as Britt Reed, daring young publisher of the Daily Sentinel, gazes out of his office window at the sprawling city beneath him, does not know that on the other side of the city, a crisis is building, one that will soon reach a climax and bring him into action once again as the Green Hornet, nemesis of all criminals who operate within the confines of the law. Unknown to him, his latest adventure is beginning in a trading stamp center. Normally a scene of busy activity as customers exchange their collected stamps for merchandise. Today, however, pandemonium is building as the manager desperately places a telephone call to his employer. And I tell you, we can't handle it. They're tearing the place apart. I just called the police. Well, we didn't know. When I got word today that most of the stamps we took in this week were counterfeit, I tried to close the place. The people inside wouldn't leave, and the line outside started pressing in. And that's when they all began grabbing the stuff off the shelves. Oh, no, there goes the window. I tell you, it looks like the battle will run out there. Yes, I've got my door barricaded. I just hope it holds until the police get here. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I think they're here. Thank heaven. I call you back if I survive. Chief, here are the pictures of that ride. Look at the place. It's wrecked. Hmm. Mike, never underestimate the power of an angry woman. Counterfeit trading stamps, eh? Yes, and if you ask me, it's the same bunch that have been running all the rest of that counterfeit stuff in town. Oh, I'm sure of it. Have the police been able to find out anything about where the stamps came from? Oh, sure. A few of the women told them it was kids outside the markets, you know? Like, like the ones who help carry packages home. They all had some sad story the women fell for. They were selling a hundred books of stamps for a buck, and all of them counterfeit. And I suppose there were no kids selling books today outside the market. No, it, it seems like it all happened over the weekend. Axford, I'm sure you're right. We've had a wave of counterfeiting going on. Phony driver's licenses and car registrations, football tickets. But so far, no money. Whoever they are, they've been smart enough not to counterfeit money. Because then we'd have an excuse to bring the Secret Service into it. Yes, and if I recall correct, there was another riot, kind of like this one at the stadium, the night of that rock and roll concert, remember? Wasn't that when it all began? Yes, the 4th of July. Herman's Hermits were playing. And when kids started showing up with duplicate seat numbers, they found out half the tickets were phonies. The people at the admission gate couldn't tell the difference. And when they tried to close the doors, the crowd started a riot. Yes, I wonder. Have, have you talked to the DA? Scanlon? Yes. The last time we ran a story on it, he told me they've been working on it. Now, they're convinced it's a local operation in town here. But they can't find any trace of the printing plant. Says they've checked every last hole in the wall printer in town with no luck. Of course, with this small an operation, it could be hidden in anybody's basement. They need something more to work on. Listen, Mike. Something's beginning to tie in here. Herman's hermits, football, driver's licenses, and today's riot. There's something in common about all of them. Chief, what are you getting at? Kids. There are always kids involved here somewhere. Gora, you're right. But you're not telling me some kid set up a printed plant in his basement. No, no, no. These forgeries have been too professional for that. It's the work of adults. And the way they've been going about it, small stuff hit and run like they're sort of trying out their stuff to see if it's any good. But the next thing you know, it will be money or stock certificates or some really big haul. We've got to put a stop to it now. Yes, but chief, if the police haven't been able to do anything... But these we're... kids, maybe there's a lead there, Mike. Excuse me. Yes, Mr. Reed. I want a list of all new businesses, new places that have opened this year in town that might conceivably have some connection with kids. You mean teenagers? Yes. Now, it would have to have been opened before July 4th. Okay, I'll go down to the morgue and get the files. Get me scanning on the phone, too. Right. Okay, Mike. I'll buzz you if I find what I'm looking for on the files. This is what I've been able to come up with so far. Uh-huh. Let's see. Ice cream parlor, sporting goods, records, and hi-fi, clothing. Uh, what's this? Open June 1st. The Coco Go-Go. That's that discotheque for kids underneath the big place that opened in January for adults, the Tiger. And uh, this is for kids, hmm? Yes. You know, they don't serve any alcohol, just cocoa and soft drinks. The Coco Go-Go. 
Who owns this place? Let's see. Lou Volpicelli is the principal owner. Volpicelli the gambler? Mm -hmm. He's never been in trouble with the police, but some of his friends are a little shady. Yes, it's beginning to make sense. You think they're running a counterfeit printing press at the discotheque? Why not? It's a perfect setup. It's an easy way to kids. And it would be easy to run a press under all that noise. Yes, that's right. But how could you ever get in there and prove it? That they'd, they'd have it well guarded. Yes, but we could take a look. Miss Case, you feel like doing a little dancing? <laughs> oh, Mr. Reed, you're finally asking me out on a date. And of all places, the Coco Go-Go. Aren't we a little old for that place? <laughs> Don't worry, we'll bring Cato along. He's up on all the latest dances. Besides, it'll give me a chance to try out the new Hornet scanner I've been working on. The uh, pocket-sized one. You mean the electronic amplifying device? Yes, I think I can adjust it so that if there is a printing press running... I might be able to detect it over the sound of the music. Now, look. First, we'll cover the adult place, the tiger. We'll split up. You and Kato will go to the Coco Gogo, and I'll meet you in there. Kato, just what were you doing out there? Oh, my specialty, the boogaloo. How you like it, boss? Well, like they say, it's really boss. <laughs> You're a little out of date. You're supposed to say, it's what's happening. Oh. Look at the way some of these kids are dressed. What would you call that? Why, those are just plain, ordinary teeny boppers, Brit. Teeny boppers? I'm sure, boss. That's what they're called. Uh, don't you dig the scene? Cato, I think this atmosphere is going to your head. <laughs> oh, honestly, he's right. Don't you read your own newspaper? I thought I did. Cato, let's get down to business. Is the scanner working? Did you find anything upstairs in the tiger? No. I roamed around pretty thoroughly. The scanner's working all right. But I didn't pick anything up. I hope I have better luck downstairs here. Oh, uh, how about that door over there, Mark Private? I know, I saw it. When they start dancing again, I'm going to work my way over there. Brett, look at that man over there talking hmm. to the waiter. He was staring at you. He looks familiar. Where? Oh, yes. That's our old friend, Al Brown. Al Brown? The West Coast Hood? Yes. He isn't too fond of me. The Sentinel helped run him out of town two years ago. He's coming over here. Well, that's all right. This place is beginning to look more interesting every minute. Well, well, pretty meeting you here. Britt Reed, the noble publisher. Brown, I thought you were supposed to stay out of this city. That was a long time ago. I happen to be a legitimate businessman now. I'm managing this place. You? You're running this discotheque, eh? care to go over the books, Mr. Reed. You'll find everything very much in order. I'm sure. You've always been a smooth operator, Al. Look at Reed. If you're coming here to bug me, I'll be glad to have you escorted out. What are you doing here anyway? This place is for kids. Since you ask, my paper is doing a story on discotheques. I heard this place was pretty unusual. Do you object to our taking a look around? <laughs> Just make yourself right at home, Reed. And when you print the story, be sure to spell my name correctly. Well, Paul Bicelli has him managing the place. Yes. I just need one more item to convince me. The printing press. Yes. I just want enough time to run the scanner over this room. Look, Reed, the band's coming back for another number. Now's your chance. Want to dance? Yes. I'll start. And then, Cato, you cut in. That'll give me a chance to get lost over by that door. Got it? Great, boss. Come on, Casey. Let's go. Let's see what the scanner says. Wait. What are you doing in here? Why, I uh, thought this was the washroom. My mistake. Oh, yeah? Can't you read? There is a big sign on the door marked private. You know what that means? Apparently it means you can come in here and act like a tough guy. Listen, Reed. I just looked up the club rule book. 
It seems we've got the right to refuse entry to anybody over 21 in here. And that especially includes you. Now get out of here and take your friends with you. <laughs> Hello, Lou. Yeah, he's gone. I guess what I caught him. Inside the private door. Nothing to worry about, huh? Listen, it's no coincidence. The Sentinel just had a big spread this morning about counterfeiting. He shows up here tonight, huh? Yeah, I know. Even if they get a search warrant, by the time they get through that door, we can slide the whole printing unit out. The fake pizza oven goes in and nobody can find it. Yeah, I know all that. But suppose something goes wrong. Oh, look, look, instead of starting and running 20 and $10 bills for the West Coast this week, I say we dismantle the press and get it out of here for a while till the heat's off. Call the coast and... What? They would? When did you hear that? Yeah, yeah, I see. Well, I don't like it, Lou. I don't like a one bit. <laughs> Convinced that he is on the right track, the following day, Britt Reed has a conference with District Attorney Scanlon at the Sentinel office. All right, Britt, I'm convinced, but convincing a court to issue a warrant is another matter. We've gone over their records thoroughly. The place is clean as a whistle. But if you and I are both convinced, I tell you something's working down there. I got a definite positive reading on the scanner just before Brown came in. Look, you know as well as I do, they're no fools. Now, let's say we get into the place, a building inspection or, or, or fire inspectors. By the time they let us inside the door, you can be sure they'll have that press dismantled and out of there with every bit of evidence. And if the police tried it, we'd have a lawsuit on our hands. There's got to be a way. The time element. That's the thing. Look, if your men were outside the place and I get in there with the hornet's sting, I can disintegrate that metal door in ten seconds. They wouldn't have time to hide anything. Well, sure, that's fine. Only one thing wrong. How is Britt Reed going to explain having the green hornet sting to the police? And if you go in as the hornet, you think they won't spot you? You won't even get in the door unless you use the gas gun on everybody in the place first. But I can't see the green hornet doing that. No, Britt. For the time being, we're stuck. And now that we know, we'll have to wait and try and trap them somehow. Sooner or later, they'll make a slip. No, that's too slow for me, Scanlon. Wait a second. I've got another idea. Halloween is coming up next Saturday night, and the Coco Gogo, I notice, is holding a costume dance. Yes? Yes. The discotheque will be jammed with kids, wearing every conceivable kind of costume. There'll be cowboys, Indians, pirates, masked men. Now, in that mob, who would notice the Green Hornet? And mm. then you could slip down to the metal door. Right. And you'd have police hidden outside and a couple of young officers inside in costume ready to jump in. It's a crazy idea, Britt, but it might work. It just might work. Well, boss, this is the first time I ever got to wear a Robin Hood costume. Yes, but we got in here, aren't you? It was a good idea. Look at all the kids with masks on. Where's Casey? She's over there at the refreshment counter. Now listen, Casey. When the next number starts, I want you to get Casey out of the way, no matter what she says, just in case there's any trouble. Right? Okay. You can make a try for it, then. Yes, I see Scanlon's men are in here, all right. And I got a good reading on the scanner a moment ago. Here goes, Cato. Good luck, boss. Hey, kids, you can't come in here. It ain't allowed. Oh, that's all what right. The, hey, what do you got there? Oh. Sorry, my friend, but I'd rather be alone. Now, let's see if the scanner reads. Yes, there's something running behind that door, all right. Time for the hornet's sting. Hey, what's that? Hey, what's that? Hey, where you are, all of you? Good. Let's go. 
hornet. The real green hornet. Kill it, Prince. I'll get it. Oh, no, you don't go! Get him, shall we? You missed! Get him again before... All right, everybody, against the wall. Hey, it's the cops! You drop that gun. Hands up! I'll get those people out of here. And grab the green hornet, too. Hey, where'd he go? He was right there a minute ago. Now he's gone. The hornets disappeared. <laughs> Look here, Brit, if you knew enough to show off yourself at that go-go place just when the police were arresting that gang, you must have had some idea what the Hornet was up to. At least you could have told me what was going on. Well, I wasn't sure, Mike. It was just a hunch on my part. Uh, I'd like to get my hands on him right now. I'd have a few words with him myself. Hey, Mr. Reed, up! Oh, sorry, Mike. Oh, don't mind me. I'm just the managing editor around here. Well, what's wrong with Mike? Uh, he's pretty angry. He still can't figure out how I always seem to know when and where the Green Hornet is going to strike. Well, if you think he's angry now, can you imagine what would happen if he ever found out who the Green Hornet really is? <laughs> yes, Miss Case. I'd probably have to leave town for a few weeks until he calmed down. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.